We've got breaking news out of the NFL where the Miami Dolphins have picked up Tua Tagovailoa's fifth year option. Our lead NFL insider Jonathan Jones confirming that news. The deal will pay Tua just over $23 million in 2024. The Tagovailoa missed the final three games of last season with a concussion, one of a couple he had last season. Five games in total were missed. Despite the injury, Tua threw for a career high 25 touchdowns and just over 3,500 yards as you take a look at his numbers. First nine starts, eight and one, but the final four starts, the Dolphins faltered uh, going 0 and four. Completion percentage also dropped and the touchdown to turnover ratio also went down. Tua had a fir great first part of the season, but after the concussions, uh, thing went da things went downhill. And as mentioned, he did miss five games throughout the season. All right, let's now welcome in our lead NFL insider, Jonathan Jones. Uh, JJ, what do you make of this news as the Dolphins pick up that fifth-year option for Tua? You know, not at all surprising that they ultimately do it, Jeremy, because they have said many times publicly, many times privately, that they are committed to Tua. Not to the tune of some Patrick Mahomes-like contract extension or even a Daniel Jones-like contract extension, but enough to where they wanted to pick up the fifth-year option for 2024 with the strong belief that he's going to be there and play well and play at a high level in 2023. The timing, though, Jeremy, is interesting because they didn't have to pick up his option until May, and a lot of teams normally don't do that, and that could be for any number of reasons, some form of chess maybe, or just simply, hey, we're worried about free agency, we'll handle that a little later on. The fact that they're doing it now, before the start of free agency, before they can talk with any potential uh, unrestricted free agents or uh, unrestricted free agents to be when the legal tampering window opens on Monday, I think is very important. I think that the Dolphins wanted this to be known. They wanted Tua to know that he was their guy. They wanted him and the rest of the team and the rest of the NFL to understand what their direction is heading into free agency. Again, there was nothing that made the Dolphins do this right now. This is really, if you want to talk about quote unquote narrative, I think that this is all about narrative right now with the Miami Dolphins where uh, they again could have waited until next month, could have waited up until the deadline uh, in early May, but instead getting this done now ahead of free agency where it doesn't impact what they do in 2023. It doesn't impact the free agents that they ultimately talk to or don't talk to. It just kind of puts everyone at ease within the Dolphins organization if they are believers in Tua. It certainly puts Tua Tungavaloa at ease with so much circling around him. He is uh, their guy. This is yet another commitment to him. Is he going to be their guy for the next decade? You know, plenty to get figured out there. But is he their guy in 2023 with the hope that they have him under the fifth-year option in 24? Absolutely. I mean, JJ, what's your thinking about that in terms of Tua's long-term future with the team? As you mentioned, this is just the fifth-year option, but but longer term. I mean, is is this a is this a kind of play for pay type thing as he moves into the latter stages of this contract in terms of determining his long-term future? Look, if he plays the way that he did for the first, you know, three quarters of the season, if he can replicate that next year and do it uh, over the course of a 17-game season, if he can do it healthy, then I don't see why they wouldn't feel comfortable and confident signing him to some sort of contract extension at the end of next season. Jeremy, I want to be clear, this is not a precursor right now to some sort of contract extension. I think this makes very clear that while Tua is up for a contract extension this offseason, that that's not going to happen, that they're going to want him to play this out, that uh, at worst, they're going to have him under the fifth year option next year. Uh, at best, they'll be able to negotiate a contract extension around this time next year uh, if his play warrants that. And so obviously the biggest question with Tua is going to be his health. He had two confirmed concussions. Obviously he had three significant blows to the head. We'll never know if that third uh, hit was uh, ultimately a concussion or not. He spent uh, a very long time in the concussion protocol the second time around. Uh, we know that not many NFL players, a, a percent of a percent, ultimately deal with multiple concussions in one season. So uh, it is something that the Miami Dolphins, that Tua, that folks around uh, the organization and Tua are taking very seriously. There's no question about that. However, they obviously hope that this isn't something that's going to be a reoccurring problem. Uh, and so that, again, is why they're hedging themselves by not giving him the contract extension this offseason. 
but they really like what he does. They love what he does in Mike McDaniel's system. And obviously, uh, for so long this season, when he was healthy, it worked. Mm -hmm. And it worked, of course, with having Tyreek Hill over there and Jalen Waddell and many others. Uh, they believe it is going to continue to work with an improved defense under the guidance of defensive coordinator Vic Fangio. All of those things are right there in front of the Dolphins. They need to... Uh, to play at the level that he was at this past season, and they need him to be healthy. And so that's exactly what this fifth-year option is, is letting him know, hey, we believe in you. Let's go out there and let's get it done next, next season. J.J., you mentioned optics and timing of, you know, picking up this fifth-year option. There were rumors circling that maybe Tom Brady's considering coming out of retirement. Miami was a team that, that he could be with. I mean, when you look at the Dolphins' depth chart, I mean, it's Tua, Skylar Thompson, Teddy Bridgewater. I mean, are the Dolphins a team that are in the market for a backup quarterback right now? I think, frankly, just about every team should be in the market for a backup quarterback. You know, they like Skylar Thompson. Did they have to throw him in there a little bit earlier than they would have liked to? Last season, obviously, you don't want to see your starter go down and then your backup go down uh, the way that uh, Teddy did, both with uh, the hand or, or pinky injury, and then obviously when he was taken out of the one game where he didn't have a concussion, but uh, he was taken out be due to the protocol. Uh, and so would they feel good about year two with Skylar Thompson? Perhaps, maybe. I would have to imagine so. But I wouldn't at all be surprised to see them go after some mid-tier veteran as well this offseason. Perhaps signing, re-signing Teddy Bridgewater. Uh, maybe going after someone else. Uh, there's no question about it. But again, it's, it's interesting because they could talk to Lamar Jackson as early as Wednesday of next week. Uh, via the non-exclusive franchise tag. And a lot of folks were trying to put Lamar in Miami, uh, considering that he is from that area. I, I think that this obviously should put to rest anything like that. Uh, but will the Dolphins still be in the market for a quarterback? Sure. Uh, will the Dolphins ever take their eye off of Tom Brady? Who knows? I feel like that's going to be a, a saga that we're all going to be talking about, <laughs> uh, not just this week, not just next month. It's probably going to be week 12 and some starter goes down <laughs> somewhere and, and the team's doing well and we're all going to say, well, could Tom Brady come back? He's, he's in shape. So that'll always be there, unfortunately. Well, and we're waiting to see what happens with Jameis as well. I mean, the Saints asking him to restructure his contract. If not, they're going to release him. I mean, maybe Jameis could be out there. And I mean, he's not that far away and certainly has some familiarity uh, with Florida football. Uh, JJ, so the Dolphins have made a couple of moves today to free up a lot of money for their salary cap situation. So what, what's next for Miami this offseason? So I think when folks saw that, they said, oh, Miami must be making a big move right now. They're restructuring Tyreek Hill's deal. Uh, they restructured Teron Armstead. Uh, they restructured Bradley Chubb just the other day. Like, I think it's just good accounting. I just think that's what the Miami Dolphins and, frankly, a whole bunch of other teams are doing ahead of free agency because you want to be able – to have optionality uh, if you are any NFL team heading into free agency. You have a plan, and then a lot of times that plan goes sideways, and you have to go to a backup plan, and maybe you have to spend a little bit more. Maybe you go after a guy that you ultimately didn't think that you could get, or you may have to spend a little bit more. Maybe you trade for a player, you need to take on a big cap number in 2023. And so you're just creating space. You know that Tyreek Hill is going to be here for a while. You know Teron Armstead. You know that Bradley Chubb, whom you just traded for at the trade deadline last year, that these guys are going to be around. And so uh, those sort of simple contract restructures, every team essentially does it. It's what accounting is in the NFL right now. And so, yeah, they are, are well under the cap right now. They're going to have some flexibility but that's exactly why they did it to have that flexibility they may have their eye on someone or some ones and then those guys may get scooped up by someone else and then they decide okay we're switching gears but it's always good to be well under the cap heading into free agency will they make some splashes of course they made some last year I would anticipate that they'll be active again based off the amount of cap space that they have. But whereas folks thought, ooh, there must be a quarterback move, no, the quarterback move is the quarterback that's already in the building. Our lead NFL insider, Jonathan Jones, joining us to discuss the breaking news out of the NFL, the Miami Dolphins picking up the fifth-year option for Tua Tonga-Vailoa. Great stuff, J.J. Thanks for hopping on with us. Appreciate it. And they'll be discussing this and, of course, all the other big stories in the NFL over on the Pick 6 podcast. Uh, Will Brinson. John Breach, Katie Mox, all the super friends. They're discussing everything topical in the NFL these days as we head towards the NFL draft. You can download and follow the Pick 6 podcast 
wherever you get your podcasts or make it easier on yourself to scan that QR code to listen now. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.